I'm going to show you my screen. Uh, hold on one second. Hi, Beth. How are you? So one second. So today what we're going to talk about, let me pull up my screen here. Hold on one second. Today we're going to talk about prospecting or what some people call um, finding new opportunities. So we're going to get that started. Um, Beth, if you don't mind, just for the sake of the call, I'm going to take off your camera. Oh, that's cool. All right. Or can, can you do that? Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. All right, so let me pull up um, my screen. All right. So um, we're going to do – I'm going to show you my screen right now. We're going to do a lot of uh, back and forth. So I'm just going to leave it in, in this kind of uh, a mode right now, and then we'll, we'll jump um, into uh, the web browser here in a, in a few seconds. But um, – I'm also going to mute everyone. So, all right. So, um, all right. Welcome. This is session number two of the LinkedIn to Profitability training. Today, we're going to talk. We are going to talk about finding new business and opportunities. Um, in the first one, you, you really should have. Uh, we went through the strategy. We went through. Um, uh, setting up a profile, having it conducted the right way, optimizing it, set up a company page and how to use the company page. If you were not able to see that yet, um, it's still on the website. You'll have access to the video. It also on that, uh, on that uh, page, we also have the full um, guide, which essentially covers everything that we'll be learning in the next three uh, – well, next three weeks counting today. So that, that has everything in there as well. So um, – so make sure you go there, reference it. You all should have the links and passwords for it. Uh, after today, we'll um, I'll send you another link. Excuse me for the other for this presentation, which is going is being recorded as we speak, and that will be uploaded to the website, and you will be able to see all of that. So today, um, okay, fantastic. Uh, today we are going to be talking about prospecting. We're going to go over the advertising opportunities and overview there. We are going to um, we're going to um, be talking about using groups for new opportunities in business, and then free versus paid memberships. So there's a lot to cover here in the next uh, 50 minutes or so. So the formula for prospect for prospecting success. Um, prospecting can really be a number of different things. It could be um, whether you're going after new customers or new clients, it could be finding new strategic partners, it could find uh, not, uh, donors for non for profits, um, you know, volunteers, even that. So, pro although we prospecting is really more referenced towards uh, finding new business, it's still this formula can still be used for all these different um, uh, goals essentially. So the, the first part of all this, and this is why I had everyone do the strategy in the beginning, because it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it is be, it will be used throughout our, our efforts and our, um, our processes as we move forward through this training and also just in general what you're doing. So um, the first thing when prospecting on LinkedIn, the formula, you have to start with your audience. Uh, who is your audience? Identify who those people are, and that's where you reference your strategy. Your strategy will uh, will point out that, uh, you know, who your clients are, um, you know, what positions they are, what type of industries they work in, where the location is, and that's all very important. The same thing can go for, like, donors. You know, are they HR managers? Are they, um, you know, are they working at Fortune 500 companies? Um, you know, are they head of charity? I don't know exactly who the donors might be. It could be the, the public, so you can go after almost anybody or anybody. Um, but uh, you really want to narrow those searches down because uh, I'll show you in a second how, we, how we're going to do that. Um, the second part of all, and then the, the last one is strategic partners. So 
if you're not sure what strategic partners are, but uh, strategic partners are essentially people who uh, work with similar types of customers or clients or donors um, that you do, but they don't they don't compete against you, um, and uh, and they don't do the same services. So they their services or charity complement what you do, and so you guys can leverage each other's uh, network. And what the great opportunity there is is that those strategic partners t- typically have you know anywhere from like 25 to hundreds of potential customers that they are potential customers or donors of yours that you can definitely use, but they um, they already have that relationship built. So you're cutting through having to build up a lot of trust if these people are recommending you there. So there's a lot of opportunity to find those strategic partners on LinkedIn. So you want to make sure you reference your strategy in all of this. Second part of the formula for prospect on LinkedIn, use the advanced filter option or advanced search option to filter down the results. And I'll show you exactly what we're talking about here in a second. Um, the, the third part is save your results. So once you find a good list of people that you want to go after, make sure you save them. And again, we'll show you how to do that. Uh, the, the fourth part, create a custom message. And the, the custom message has to, it, it, it has to be unique. Um, the great thing about this is that you can actually um, you can actually just create it once, and then you can make little tweaks to it for the new people that you send out. So you you know you'll I'll show you what I mean by that, but it's really really simple in what you have. And and the actual uh, uh, suggestions or templates for how to create the message, there's examples in the guide. Uh, under prospecting that you can use and you can kind of you can make adjustments towards your industry towards the people that you're going after um, you want to make sure it's brief and to the point identify a connection if you have one and then create a call to action at the end so you want them to do something besides just connect with you the last one is follow up because a lot of times you might connect with somebody and then um, you have that call to action, but then never actually do anything. And so there's ways and, and you definitely don't want to just let that go to the wayside. So you want to take advantage and follow up with those people. So with that said, let's pull up LinkedIn and then get... Now I'm going to switch my screen to my LinkedIn. Uh, everyone should see this now. Um, so what I would recommend is if you uh, if you haven't done this already, make sure you pull up your own LinkedIn uh, profile, and um, we'll we'll walk through this, and you can be able to do some of it uh, yourself uh, as we do this. So the first thing when you get onto your LinkedIn profile or just to LinkedIn in general, you'll be taken to the homepage and this is perfectly fine. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to find a position in which you want to, um, go after a position. It could be an industry too. So let's say for instance, we are looking for HR managers. So we can put in HR manager, here on the top and then all these suggestions are going to come up so the first thing i would do is that let's look for people and that's the purpose of all this we want to look for people with hr manager titles so we click on this and then we will be taken to this area and now what we see right at the top here is that there's 743,000 results for hr manager that's a lot of people to try to manage to try to reach out to so what we're going to do is that we're going to start to filter this down and we're going to filter it down based on our prospect criteria that we've created in our strategy. So one position could be HR manager. Um, the next thing that we want to do is from a filter standpoint is that we want to go after, at least for this circumstance, we want to go after second degree connections. So we click on second degree connections and now we see it went from 743,000 to 19,000, which is a lot more manageable to uh, go after and, and contact and reach out to people. Uh, the next part here is that we want to pick a location. So you might say, well, my location is just in the Chicago line area. Uh, others might say I'm all over. I want to go United States. So you can go United States. You could even go international if you want to. Um, you could also pick specific cities. So you can filter this down based on what you want to go after at this particular time. Um, for this example, we're just going to pick 
Chicago, the greater Chicago area. And we're going to hit that. And then so it went from 19 to 3,200 uh, results, which, again, becomes more and more manageable, but also very targeted. Now, if there are specific companies that you're going after, this is another place where you can write that down. Let's say you're trying to go after a large Fortune 500 company like this year's Holdings Corporation. Actually, I don't even know if they're Fortune 500 anymore. I'm going to assume they are. But um, let's say they are or Aon Hewitt. And we want to go after those type of companies so we can start picking those companies and then we can filter down even more. Now, for the sake of this, we're going to keep it more general than going down to a current company. But do keep in mind, if you had companies in mind that you were trying to get your foot in the door, you can find them through this part. So let's but let's get past that. Let's just focus on the industry. And the industry here is um, perhaps we want to go after people in uh, the information and technology uh, industry. We want to go after. And the thing with when you pick positions like this, the tricky thing is that Typically, you would assume that the industry is the industry that they're in. So if they're working for a company like like uh, Rose here is working for ADP. Now, she did the right job of, of putting in information technology services because she essentially works. That's what they do. I would even put them maybe as a, a technology company. But, you know, that I guess from her perspective, that's what she is doing. Like even like Kraft Foods here, I wouldn't put Kraft Foods at informational technology services. So you got to you have to keep that in mind is that some of these people aren't going to list the industry as the, the exact company that they're working for. They might just base it off of the position that they're in. So like human resources, that's obviously what a lot of people have done here is that um, instead of focusing on the, the company they work for to, to list as the industry that they're in, they put in the industry based on their position. So um, keep that in mind when you're moving forward. Um, when you go after more higher level people like CEOs or presidents or partners in firms, they typically will have their, the right industry in there. But when you go after people that are you know, down a couple tiers, maybe HR managers, um, those are people that are, are you, this is something that's going to happen. So just so you're aware. So now that we picked a few industries, um, we can even pick a few more or we can just keep them right where they are. There are more filters here as far as like past companies, non-for-profit interests. If you're a non-for-profit um, and you're looking for people who maybe for volunteering, um, this is an opportunity where you can go in there. And there's actually other opportunities on here for um, non-for-profits to post stuff uh, for volunteer options, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a later time. But um, th that's one other filter you could add here. There are a number of other filters here as far as like company size, uh, interested in, but you have to be a paying, a premium paying member on LinkedIn to get. And um, I had it listed as today, we were going to cover some of what the free and premium uh, membership looks like. And so I'm just, because of it, it really affects a lot of what this process does. I'm just going to talk about it as, it as it comes up instead of just segmenting it all out uh, on its own. So from a premium standpoint, the nice thing is if you have a premium, you have advanced search options like these, like uh, interested in, which does help uh, company size. If you were targeting a specific company size, you can get around, you can use this filter to really narrow down your search so we could you know figure out company or find companies that are 11 to 50 to or, or 11 to 200 so we can click these two options um, and that really helps people especially if you're going after a certain size company um, and and those this one the interested uh, that's that's good um, seniority level is also a good one to consider and, and that from the and then from the um, from the advanced search options, the filters for the premium, the, those are really the three ones that I would use uh, to find more people, not not really the groups or user experience, but that could come in handy for your personal uh, preference and, and for your prospects. So you, you have to keep that in mind, but those are available, but the ones that I recommend uh, beyond the, the typical free ones are the seniority level interested in and company size. 
Now, there are other ways to find company sizes too, but uh, we'll get in that to in, in a second. But let's say, uh, let's say for instance, uh, we're looking to connect with people who are manager of HR at a uh, at some of these companies, and the reason why why we we want to provide some training to them, and and I'm just using this as a hypothetical, but this could be anything. Um, so what I would do is let's say I'm going to pick uh, um, Joshua here. And uh, I see Joshua's in the greater Chicago area, so he's there. Um, we have six shared connections, so I can click on this little area to look at who we're connected with. Um, and then I can also click on his profile. And this is something you want to do. Once you find someone that's a little quali that's qualified on the search, you want to go ahead and you want to click on their profile. Now, let me just ret go back for a second and. Um, let's say we get to the search and you can see all the criteria up here. If you want to reset it, you can reset it. You could click on here and get out of it. Um, but the other thing you can do too is you can hit this little save search button up here. And this is another um, this is another uh, feature, added feature for, for premium members, which this is another one. Um, typically, if you're paying free, uh, if you just have free membership on LinkedIn, you only get three saved searches. If you're paying a, another premium, depending on which one, you can get anywhere from five to seven uh, saved searches. I actually have a premium version that is no longer on the option. So I did get grandfathered into what I'm available to get, um, but they no longer have that option anymore. And uh, what they do, and, and they actually, the, the, basic one starting off gives you seven search save searches so anyway what you could do is that let's say I want to um, I can uh, knock one of these out I'm just gonna knock this one out I can delete it and now I can it's gonna still say I need to add more but I could just exit out of here come back and now I have it so what you'll see is you have HR manager uh, perhaps I want to put in you know Chicago um, and then like if you did a certain size, you could do like 11 to 200. I, we didn't do that, but that's something that you could put in here just so you know from your perspective moving forward what it is. So we would just put shy, uh, shy for Chicago, push save. One second. Guys, give me one second. Hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. All right, so just getting back to this real quickly, um, saving that. So once you save it, you'll be good. Um, you'll also, when you save it too, you can go in here and you can edit it. Um, the couple things you can pick is you can get alerted, so you can get a notification, an email sent to you either weekly, monthly, or never. I'd say if you want, if you, this is something you'll be used on a weekly basis um, and continued, I would definitely say save it as weekly, and that's good. Um, go like that you'll get alert for the new ones that come up so uh, which is great it just helps makes your life a little bit easier moving forward all right so back to this um, all right so we saw Josh and we said how you know what he uh, he's got a good senior HR business partner at Groupon this looks like a good company we have share six shared connections so we click on him and what we want to do here is we want to further qualify him we want to make sure that he is the perfect the person that we want to talk to. And so what we do is you're going to look through his profile, take a look, you know, read a little bit about his summary. Obviously, he doesn't have much here. You can look at uh, his job description. Obviously, most people should know who Groupon is. 
Uh, so it's not like we need to research his company, but uh, I'll show another example here in a second. We can, uh, another way to qualify him too is that we can look at his social media. So we can click on his Twitter account, which shouldn't really take you out of LinkedIn, but it does. Um, this is, we could see that he hasn't done anything on his Twitter since June of last year. So he's not very active on that. Um, and then we could look at the, the website, but we know the website because it is a larger company. But let's say, all right, I want to say, all right, Josh looks like a good person. I want to connect with him. Um, and a few other things you can look at too is to see how you're connected uh, with him. So you can look at some of the shared connections here at, uh, say, Mike or, you know, any of these other people, Matthew, uh, Simpson. And so we're all set. And let's say, all right, this guy looks great. I want to connect with him. I'm going to hit the connect button. Now, this is one way you can actually approach it. And there's a, a few um, different methods in how you can actually convey or write up this message. But once you get to this point, this is the saying, all right, I want to connect with him and I want to, he could be a good prospect, whatever the case may be. But the key here is that one, you want to click as friend. Um, and then you want to wipe out this, this uh, default message. Any time you connect with somebody, I always recommend that you delete this default message because just it's to take two minutes or even a minute to write up a very custom message, even if you know the person, even if it's as simple as, hi, let's connect, just shows that you're willing to take a little bit of time to take out this default. And especially for someone that you are looking to prospect or get in front of, this is a big opportunity and this is where you know a lot of the the tricks come out this is where i've seen a lot of success is creating a good strong message that gets the point across that creates value for them also tells them why you're looking to connect with them and then has a call to action so i could be like um hey josh so first thing you want to do here is you want to go hey josh and then you would say uh, right off the bat you just want to put it out there we don't know each other so you want to make that aware. Um, however, or but, however you want to place it. Um, and, and keep in mind, in this message, you only have about 300 and about 300 or words you can use. So you can only get about a few sentences in here, especially if you use bigger words. But it'll tell you if you've gone beyond the limit. So we don't know each other. However, we both know Matt. Um, I noticed your profile and that you're an experienced HR manager. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Um, and so this is the thing. So I, I know, it, so what you wanna do here, and I'm just gonna um, discuss how, how to do this. We don't know each other, however, we both know Matt. So that determines that we don't know each other, but we have a commonality because we both know somebody. Um, then you say, I noticed in your profile that you do this. Now, if this is somebody, th these could be this message can be constructed a couple different ways. You're going after a strategic partner. You could place, you know, I noticed that you work uh, with, you know, smaller businesses and I happen to work with smaller businesses too. Um, and then the message from beyond that could be, you know, we should sit down and, or, or we should, you know, do a quick introductory phone call. I think there's ways I can actually refer you business. And if that's the case, that is, that's the value. You need to figure out how you can bring some sort of value to them. Um, you know, and in this circumstance, like if I'm looking at the HR manager, um, this could be something like I'm a non-for-profit. So it's like, you know, uh, I noticed in your experience, HR manager, um, I work for a non-for-profit and we're looking to um, grab grants from corporate companies. was wondering if you could point me in the right direction. That could be the message here for Joshua. Um, you know, you want to bring some sort of value to the table, uh, whether that's a, a networking opportunity for you guys, for you to refer business to them. Um, it also could be just, it could be aggressive. It could be an aggressive approach, um, an aggressive approach like, Hey, I noticed uh, you, you're a small business owner. Um, I happen to work with small business owners. We have a great um, a free training program that's coming up. So you're still giving them um, a, a, a piece of value that's free. Um, and you have to put this in the message, but uh, you know you want to connect with them. And then you say before we, you know, I offer you the free training. 
I was wondering if we could just jump on a quick uh, introductory phone call. So there's a lot of different ways you can create this message and it could be different for the positions that you're going after. But the point is, is that you want to let them know when to be frank. You want to uh, no, let them know that there's some commonality there. You want to let them know why you contacted them. And then you also want to let them know um, how you can bring them value and then create a call to action. And then the call to action, I'm not going to finish that sentence, but be like, uh, would you be open to a, to an intro, uh, or it could be like to a, a brief call in the next few weeks. And so, um, if you're taking like the networking approach, something that's not so aggressive, and you're just starting to build up the relationship, it could be, you know, this message could be as simple as like, I noticed that you work in this field. Um, I'm looking to connect with people like yourself. And I was wondering if we could just get to know each other a little bit better, would you be open to a brief call? And, and then that way, um, they might not be super responsive to that if you're not really upfront about why or how or what you're hoping to get out of it. But there will be some people who are responsive to it. If the key is that once you find a good message that people are responding to, keep to that one and keep going with it. Um, you know, make those little tweaks because you're going to have to change things like the person's name in here. Um, you're going to have to change the, their name up at the top. Um, but once you find that right message or if you just start creating them, you can just copy these, paste them into like a, a Google Doc or a Word document. And then you can have them all saved and then you can go back and just copy and paste and make those few changes when you need to. And, and that really helps you to be efficient and to be productive um, with, with your time. And it, it works. So once you find that right message, you'll, you'll see really good results. Um, they're going to range. So one of two things are going to happen is that if you're more aggressive about saying, all right, um, I'm actually looking to do business with you, would you open be open to call? You're not going to see such a high response rate. You're going to see more of like probably around the 20 to 30% response rate. Um, but if you have your your profile set up the right way, it's strong, it conveys the message that you're trying to attract, how you're trying to attract people, uh, what value you bring to people, what you're gonna see is that those people, even before they connect with you, they're gonna look at your profile and you'll be able to see that from the analytics standpoint. You'll be able to see that those people are looking at your profile and then you'll see who actually then um, accepts that invitation. And then the, beyond that, you also see whether that person actually um, will actually uh, reach out to you. So uh, we're, we're working with a, a client right now who is a Vistage chair member, and he is uh, looking to go after CEOs that are making, that run a, uh, you know, a $10 million revenue company up to, you know, $100 million. And so we've been using this formula and the response rates have been good. Some some weeks they're better, and some weeks they're you know they're kind of slow. And so it just ranges. But um, for the most part, every call that he gets though is qualified. They understand what he's trying to do. Um, they are okay with it, and it really makes the 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 calling the prospecting uh, approach um, much warmer. And and so and and that's. And, and so we're using this approach. We also, and this is something else you guys can do too, is that let's say um, one of two things can happen here. Either Josh will respond to you and, and accept it. Uh, he won't accept the invitation, um, which is the worst case scenario. If he accepts it and doesn't respond, then that's okay because he's still in your network. And then you can also still get in front of him by making certain updates. Uh, you could always reach out to them from a, a message standpoint, which you can create a little bit longer. And that's where that follow up comes in. If Josh does accept your invitation but doesn't respond, you can send him a message within a couple of days of him connecting and say, hey, uh, thank you for connecting. Love to get to know you a little bit better. Would you still be open to that phone call in the next few weeks? And you can send that message to him uh, as soon as you're connected and you can go from there and see how he responds. Um, after that initial one, after that follow-up message, if he doesn't respond, I would just let it go for a little bit. You can always mark it down to follow up with him, um, and I, I definitely would. But I wouldn't. I would hold off to follow up with him, probably in, in you know a couple weeks uh, or so. 
So don't don't be overly aggressive at that point. Um, the nice thing too is you can save these contacts. Um, you can go here in the little bar on the, on the right side and you could push save and you could save Josh. Um, and then in here you can um, you can make a note saying, yeah, and this works for either you connect with him or not. Um, and you could say, you know, uh, good prospect, uh, invited, invited to connect. And then you could hit a reminder in like a week or a month, um, you know, what to follow up with him. If you push save, you can add them to a tag, uh, people that you want to talk to. And then you can also add a reminder. So there's like a CRM almost built in, a customer relationship manager built into LinkedIn. Um, and uh, this allows you, this is, um, I believe, a, I, I do believe this is actually a free function. Um, I don't think you need to be a premium member to have these abilities. But uh, I could be mistaken on here because right now I cannot see because I'm only premium. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this is this is a free uh service. So um, there you go. Now, let's say the other approach, there's another approach to this as well. All right. Let's say we look at Josh and we don't want to go straight for the connection. What we want to do is we want to find out and maybe see if there's a way to get an even warmer introduction to Josh. And so all we can do is that we can really leverage the people that were connected with Josh. So I know Matt uh, uh, pretty well. And so I would say, all right, I could actually either click on Matt's profile and right away, um, and there's also this little button right here that says ask Matthew about Josh. So we can click that um, and they create this little default message right here. Can you introduce me to Josh? Um, I would even wipe this out because you don't want an introduction right away. What, what you want to do is that you actually just want to ask, I would just send Matt a, if we go back, I would just send Matt um, and this could be done via a phone call. It could be done through a message on LinkedIn. It could be done um, with a, just a regular email. But let's say if we wanted to, we could just do this and do a question. And we could say, hey, Matt, um, we, I noticed that uh, I was doing a search. I noticed that you were actually connected with Joshua over at Groupon. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about him. Do you know him well? Um, and that, and that way, what, what most people respond and how most people respond are, you know, um, one, a couple different things. They could either say, you know, that person's great. Uh, if you want an introduction, I'd be more than happy to, I know this person this way and that, and then that's wonderful. Another time, another, um, possibilities that they could say, you know what, I don't really know that person really well, but I'm willing to make the introduction for you. Um, I've actually been asked to do that uh, for a few people that I don't know very well, but I still made the introduction and I don't think it, anything has really come out of it, but it's still worth a, you know, a shot at it. Um, another possibility is that they respond and say, you know what, uh, I know him, the, he's really you know busy or he's, uh, he's an asshole <laughs> and so you don't really want to know him or he's not going to be interested in what you're providing, so don't even waste your time. And that actually is one of the better responses you can get because then you're not wasting your time on these people um, that that will never respond to you or, you know, will just be mean to you or just will, there won't be a good relationship that comes out of it. So, it you know, getting that that no, essentially, and I put a, and you can't see it, but I'm putting in quotations around it, getting a no in that in that sense is actually good um, because then again, you're saving both yourself and that person some time. Um, moving forward. So uh, definitely use, you, you can you can go a couple different ways. You can send out the connections to them or you can ask for introduction. Um, you know, you could, tr you could try one or the other. What I've done too in the past is that I've gone straight for the connection instead of, you know, waiting for someone to make an introduction, which could take time because that person could be busy. It could take a few weeks. So if you're looking to be aggressive here, you just go with the connect. If they don't respond in like a week or so, then you can always just go back and follow up with one of those people and then see if that works. And then, then you could see how, you know, if that works or not. And, and for some people it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you know, then you're still giving yourself a shot at that, at that opportunity. So there you go. Um, how to find those prospects on there, um, and the different ways you can connect with them as well. Oh, um, 
let me go back. One quick thing here is that another premium, um, and th this is mostly a premium, but you can still get it without it. Um, the other option here is that instead of just going to connect or an email or to a, a, a introduction from somebody you know, you can actually send Josh an in-mail. Now, what an in-mail is is that it's a it's a message that is done through LinkedIn that bypasses your connection. So typically, the only way you can send someone a message is if you're connected with them on a first degree. Um, and if that's the case, LinkedIn looks kind of funky. Um, so there we go. Better. So. And they actually even change this. So as a premium member, though, you get uh, anywhere between five to uh, I think like up to like 20 per month of in-mails that you can just send to anyone, um, any second degree connection, any third degree connection as well. And as you can see in the bottom, they typically roll over if they're not used. And so and they go up to three months. So I have five per month, but uh, I don't use them a whole lot. So right now I have 15 in-mail credits just sitting there. It does tell you that one in-mail will be used in this circumstance. So what you can do is you can do um, you can send them something like expertise request or pick one of those options here, whichever one fits with what you're doing. Uh, write in a you know real simple message uh, subject title here, uh, quick question, um, looking to connect, and then type in a message. And this message is not restricted. So the 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 message that you created in the connection one is restricted. The one you create here is not restricted. Um, however, you still don't want to create it as a you know a little mini novel here. You want to keep it really brief, but maybe you can add a few things in here. And you also what you can do is you can um, you can add a link to a website uh, in here, which if you wanted to to direct somewhere, you could, um, and and that's that's a great opportunity here as well. But um, you know, very simple, same, kind of similar approach here. Um, you know, mention why you're connecting to them, what kind of value you can bring to them, and create a call to action. You might be able to, and, and the reason you would want to use this is if you had a little bit more to add that it wouldn't fit into the other connection. Uh, into the connection box. So there you go. You have an opportunity to use that. Um, so this is a premium feature. If you don't have premium accounts, you can still get in mail, but it costs ten dollars per in mail. At least last time I checked, they might have upped the price actually. So there you have it. Um, so that's how you prospect. Um, we talked about this the, using the advanced search options. Um, we talked about uh, the approach to it. Um, the actual um, descriptions or how you convey the message is in the guide that you all have access to. So if you want to reference that guide of how to actually create the message, go ahead and go in there. It's under the prospecting on LinkedIn section. Uh, does anyone have any questions on this? Uh, I'm going to jump over to the group section in, this in one second, but I just want to make sure that we have everything covered here. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you... Put it in the chat box down below. And if not, uh, I'm just going to move forward. So it looks like no one really has a question. And if you do, just enter it in there and I'll, I'll come back to it. All right, so let's move on to the groups. So if we, to get to the groups, um, first thing, uh, groups, there are millions of groups. And there are groups for everything you could possibly think of, from uh, alumni for colleges to alumni for corporations, that people that used to work there. Uh, there are groups for positions for CEOs, presidents. There are groups for non-for-profits. There are groups for specific locations, like a Chicago networking group. Um, so there's a group almost for everything. And so very similar to kind of searching, what you want to do is you want to find groups where your target audience, whether those are donors, volunteers, uh, prospective clients, strategic partners, you want to target those groups. Um, being in a lot of groups that are more self-focused uh, isn't going to help you in your efforts into building up a robust connection and to finding new opportunities. But to do that, you actually can go in here and you can do like very similar. You could do, uh, we could even keep HR manager here as an example. And we could just click that button right up at the top on the left. And we could scroll down to groups. And then we push the search button. 
And now we will get a group. We will get a list of groups that have that are targeting HR managers. So one thing that you do want to filter down is the languages, unless you're looking to join a group in another language. Like if you speak Italian and you want to focus on people who speak in Italian, then you can click on that. But I'm going to assume that most people on here are not speaking Italian and don't want to focus on that. So English would make the most sense. So we're going to pick English here. Um, and then you do have other options as far as categories. There's two different categories here, really. Uh, the first one is open, which means that the group is open. Anyone can join. Anyone can post. Everything is visible to the public. And then the other one's members only. And members only could have really strict um, requirements. Like you have to – it could be like for an association. And that means that you only can join the group if you're a member of the association. Um, could be other things like you just need to be vented through – and uh, typically what happens with that, and in most cases, that's what it is. They say they have a certain requirement. They make you uh, ask to join. And then when you do that, they do their own little venting. They look at your profile. They make sure you're okay. And then they, um, then they let you in. I know this because I've run a few groups myself on LinkedIn, which is something you could do too. You could start your own group on LinkedIn if you want to. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't. And you could create it around the industries that you're targeting. Um, and it could be a great place for you to start to attract um, prospects, volunteers, strategic partners into one area that you really are the 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 leader of that group. Um, and then you can, you know, you may want to make sure you're bringing value Don't want to just be pushing your stuff out there in, a, in kind of a salesy approach, but bring value, let them communicate. You can listen a lot to find out what they're talking about and how you can help them solve their problems. And then you can chime in that way. Um, you can also just, uh, you know, occasionally make some promotions like once a month, um, which is a great opportunity too. And the nice thing about being a member or running your own group is you can actually send emails or notifications out to the entire group uh, through that. And we'll get into that in a second, but I want to focus more on finding the right groups that you are not managing yourself. And so once you do that, we filter this down. Maybe when we want to look at um, HR talent solutions, uh, manager today, magazine, HR and management, so this one, so what you want to look at too is that you can see is that you can see the t the amount of discussions that are going on, the amount of members. So you can see this membership group has uh, 1.8 million members, which is humongous um, and a lot of discussions going on. So it's really fast paced once you see that. This one is still pretty fast paced with 13,000 discussions and 37 uh, and a half, uh, 37.5 uh, thousand members in there. Um, and then this one has 20. So what I would say is that when you pick a group, you really want to more focus in on what the, who you're going after. If you're if the people that you're going after are in those groups, that's the group you want to be in. Whether they have 800 members in it or 20,000 doesn't really make a di difference. You do want to make sure that they're active. Um, so that means they have some pretty good, um, discussions going on. And what you can do is you can just click on the group. And you, uh, of course, that's uh, now they're not going to let me look into that group. Um, let's see. All right. So I clicked on this one and now you can see some of the discussions that are going on here. Um, hi, all blah, blah, blah. looks like he has an actual question. Um, maybe some posting. So you could see what they're posting on here. If there's any value you could bring to it, if it's if it's attractive to you as well, and then you can also then get in and start adding your own. So what I would uh, what I would recommend here is that you want to find the groups that your your audience is in and join those groups, um, and make sure that uh, you're in there. And then once you're in there, um, I'll show you what you actually should be doing. So I'm going to go up here into groups. You have the option of actually being in about 50 groups for some reason they let me to be they let me be in 54 um but uh what you can do here is that once you're in these groups um you go in and you just go click a group here well one this little area back here that you can get through going to interest and down to groups will give you just an update of what's being posted in the groups so you, this can be its own little stream which is cool 
Um, then you can also, and then you can create a group from in here as well. But uh, then you have the list of all of your groups in here and they block them off and you could pick. And, uh, you know, a few things to keep in mind. If you're going after small businesses, then obviously a small business group is going to be good. If you're going after um, a certain area, like if you're trying to attract donors in the Lake County area, you could search for Lake County uh, charities or um, Lake County managers or something along those lines. Look by location and search for that in the search term box up there. Uh, that's a great way to finding that out. If you're going after... Um, you know, um, uh, let's say VPs of certain companies because they are in charge of the, you know, the benefits of companies, then you can go after those people too. Uh, maybe it's HR managers. So there's a lot of different things you can target. Um, and also could be for like divorce. If you're looking, if you're a divorce attorney um, and you're looking, there might be a divorce groups up here too for people who are going through divorce. Um, or it could be just finding strategic partners as well. So finding those strategic partners like CPAs, like uh, other attorneys, you can find them through these search options. Uh, but once you're in this group, um, once you're in a group, what you want to do is like once – and, and so I want to – oh, real quickly before I forget, just to go back. Um, we talked about searching and connecting with people, and, and that's a great way. But you have to keep in mind when you search and connect with people, you only are able um, – you should only keep it to about 10 people that you reach out to. You you send an invitation to connect, only 10 people per week. The reason be is that if you do too much, if you send out too many invites and people don't respond in the right way, you will lose the privileges of actually sending out a, a connection without having – their email address. So the point is that if you send out too many and they they don't respond in the right way or they never respond to you, LinkedIn sees that as a bad thing. They see it as spamming and then they will make you either send an in-mail by paying that $10 or upgrading, upgrading to a premium account or you will need that person's email address as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. So once we get to here to the group section, um, the couple things you want to do here, uh, spend, you know, I would say spend a, like a, a, an hour a week at the, the minimum in your groups. Uh, you can add discussions in here and these can be anything from questions that you might have for your industry or it could be even be links to posts that you're doing. So maybe you have a blog post that you want to share in here or an event coming up. You can post that into these groups and it's a great opportunity to uh, get more people aware of what you're doing. So uh, do that. And once you create one of these, um, so that there's a couple different ways to do this. So you can create just one post, create a title, create the body of the message and a link and then share it. And you could copy and paste all that stuff to individual groups. Or let's say you create a blog post on your website. And what you can actually do is then share it. If you have a share button on your website, let's say, um, Let's go to – and then once we're done with this part, I'm just going to show you how to do this real quickly. Uh, once you're done with this, then we're going to jump into the ads real quickly, go over how to create those. Um, and so if you scroll all the way down – and you go to, uh oh, there's no share buttons on here. All right, well, I need, I know what I need to do when I get off of here. Um, anyway, let's let's pull up uh, Wall Street Journal, and let's say we go to the Wall Street Journal. So the point I'm trying to make in all this, though, this is, of course, not pulling up. Um, is that when you find, if you have a blog post, an article, and it's on your website, or it could even be a third-party website like this one, and maybe it's five bad job interviews, and you want to post these in the groups. Now, the, the reason, I wouldn't say you want to do, like, third-party articles to post in groups. This is more sort of for your own articles that you write um, on your blog, and you should have the share buttons on there. If you click on the LinkedIn share button, 
you actually be allowed to post them to all of your groups. And so it's an easy way to get in front of all these groups without having to individually copy and paste all this stuff. So you see the option here is to share as an update, which you definitely can, but then you could share to post to groups. And then you just start typing in the groups. You could start with the S's, you could pick all of them. Uh, I could do that, I could do uh, this one. And then you can put all those groups in one, create the same title, same description, and then push share, and it will go out to all of them in one sitting. So what could take you an hour to post into all the individual groups by itself, uh, doing this this way through your own website uh, will take you only 10 minutes. So it's a, you know, a pretty easy, productive hack there. Um, all right. So we went through the groups, you know, posting uh, discussions, posting links is good. Also commenting on people's um, uh, posts too, reading what they've said, seeing what other people are commenting on, coming in there, that's a great way of getting yourself in front of people. Uh, another great opportunity with groups is that you have uh, this search option. So if you push search, you can also go to members over here. And uh, if you go to members, what you can do is you can search within the membership of the group. So let's say we're going after CEOs or let's say even presidents of companies. Um, actually, we would take out president. So here, look it. So we found a few people that fall under a president. Uh, let's say we looked at Rebecca Yates and her profile looked great. What we can actually do, don't push the connect button from here because it will give you the default message and send it out directly. But what you can actually do is you can send them a message through here, whether you're a second degree connection or a third degree. If you're part of a group with somebody, you can send them a message without having to pay for the in mail, without having to send out that connection to hopefully connect with them. And this one is pretty cool because this option allows you to attach a file. So if you have like a flyer to something, or a PDF that you wanted to share with somebody, you can actually att attach it to this message and send it to them. Uh, again, it doesn't matter as long as you're connected with them in a group, it doesn't matter if you're second or third degree. So there's something that most people don't really know about and it's really, really helpful for um, any activities. This is great too, like let's say you have a guide that you are you know, targeting HR managers for, you could send this out to them um, or it could be for like small business owners or, you know, law firms, whatever the case may be, as long as it's, you know, targeting towards their industry or their um, position, you can attach it to that, send it to them, and then hopefully they read it and they contact you. And maybe you send them, you know, a follow up to say, hey, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more. want to see what you thought about the guide, blah, 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 blah. So there you have it. That's, that's a really great way of doing it. Um, so... Let's talk about advertising on LinkedIn because this is a great opportunity. Um, first things first, to advertise on LinkedIn, you must have a company page. Um, and we talked about how to create a company page and some of the functionalities of it uh, in the first session. So if you weren't, uh, if you don't remember or you just need a, you know, a, a couple of a refresher, go back and listen to that recording. It's towards the middle and the end of it. So, um, but once you're there, you can actually create uh, an advertisement. So you can go and click on your company that you're there. And um, a few things you can do is like, let's say, all right, you have a post here and uh, you have the post. And so like you could see that we actually, I did a paid one back in the day for an event. So I made it as a post. Um, I posted up there and then I paid for it and I got four clicks, one interaction, a couple, you know, it gives you the engagement and that didn't really cost me more than like, I think like $10, um, for all that. So it was, it was worth it cause I got a couple of signups from it and, uh, it was great. So if you have an event or something along those lines, this is a great opportunity to use that. So there's a few ways of creating the ads. So what I suggest is that you actually go up here. Um, and you can go either by your name and go down to advertise here, or you can click on business services. If you see it, you could go to advertise, you know, take you to a separate page. Um, you could just go to manage and then it will ask you to enter in your, uh, password, enter in your password. And then it will be, t it'll take you to this area. Um, a few things to point out is that you can have an individual page 
for your uh, individual accounts for your LinkedIn uh, ads manager. Um, or you can have just a company account set up too. So it just depends um, how you want to do it. But if you've never done it, just follow those instructions of going to the advertise, follow the get started section, and it'll walk you through how to set all that up. Uh, once you're there, then you're going to want to create a new campaign. Now, when you create a campaign in advertisements, um, yes, a connection can be in more than one group. Absolutely. Uh, Beth asked, can a connection be in more than one group? Yes, they can. So when we were at the advertisements here, um, we will actually, um, you have two options. You can create an ad and the ad here is it can be, uh, it could be featuring, it says it featuring text, image, or video. So you can actually promote a video if you have it um, with these advertisements. Or you can sponsor content. So sponsoring content is sort of, is what I did here where I created a post like this and then I just sponsored it. So then I upped it to, um, I actually got to unpin it. Uh, I upped it uh, and I paid like $10 for it to get in front of, uh, to make a close to 1200 impressions and get four clicks. So that, that's what a sponsored, um, content is, is that you use existing and you can write up new ones too, but you send it out An ad is, you know, very direct. So we can go in here, you set it up. Uh, you can either direct it towards a certain page on your website or a page on LinkedIn, like your pro, we actually can do it for your profile. Um, or you can do it towards your company profile. Um, which is actually interesting. I, I think this is a newer feature because I, I have never noticed that you actually can promote an advertisement to your profile. That's very interesting. Or, or oh no, I'm sorry, it comes from your profile. It's still an advertisement. So what we would you do here is you create a headline. Uh, it's like any type of other advertisements. You create a headline. It could be like, um, um, don't suck at marketing. Um, get training from an awesome and experienced marketer who focuses, or it could be like who works with small businesses. And obviously, you'll have a certain number of characters in there, so it might take some tweaking. Um, but there you go. You can have that. You can see what it looks like on the side. You can add an image here. Uh, just add the one that I already have saved in here. Uh, and then you can add variations. So you could change it. You could change the don't suck at marketing or, you know, get better at marketing. I'm just making stuff up here, people. Um, so, you know, you could create stuff like that. You could change the image in this. You can upload a new one or remove it. Um, so you can do a lot of different things and you can see what it looks like here's in the square. This is what it looks like from tall, long. Um, and then you got to, you know, test ad, do that. And then we go to next. So you can add variations though. You can have one, two, three, four, five different variations if you want to. And then... Uh, then you start to target people. So, and it's going to show you right now there's 347 LinkedIn members that you're targeting. Uh, you want to narrow it down so you're not wasting a bunch of money. So you could pick specific states or cities or just the country in general. But let's say we want to do California and the San Diego area. Um, then we could pick, uh, you go after companies. We could go by job titles. So we could go to like by job title, we could go after uh, presidents. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back here for a second. Uh, by title. President, it'll give you the suggestions. Uh, owner. So, so on and so forth. And it'll 
keep on giving you suggestions. What you'll see is that it gets narrower, it, that the number gets smaller and smaller, the more focus you get. You have more targeting options here, like you can go after school names. Um, a good, looks like I have a question here. Uh, look, okay, Gary asked, uh, I may have misunderstood, could, could I create an ad campaign for my personal page? Or, or only for corporate page. No, um, you're right, uh, actually, Gary. You can create it with your personal page. Uh, what it's going to show is it's going to be an advertisement like this, um, the one I'm just creating, but it's going to say from Gary um, or it's going to say from Brandon Lewin instead of coming from Lamb Little or from Down With The Man. So, yes, it, it will show that it's coming from you, um, but it, it's going to promote – uh, your page more so. Yeah, probably one from Lamb Little, I would think. It just, I mean, honestly, Gary, depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I mean, if you're trying to target people for yourself, um, some people do that. I mean, honestly, like you see it all the time. Uh, Gary's in the insurance world, and I mean, we see this all the time. Is like uh, you watch the Bulls game; they have it sponsored by uh, Jeff. Bukovich, <laughs> which works for Nationwide. Um, he has his name associated with it, with the company, but it's really from him. And I personally think uh, from an insurance standpoint, you're really going after, you want that personal relationship. So it would make sense for you to do your own, uh, honestly. But again, it just depends. I mean, like, uh, uh, so th there's different strategies you can take just a matter of how you want to approach it. But yes, you have the option of doing that. And uh, when we talk on Thursday, if you have any questions about that, Gary, we can definitely talk. So uh, what you could do here is that the data gets pretty significant. You can you could target people who field the study. You could target by school name. You could target uh, by degree. You could target by skills. Um, so all those skills that people have in their profiles, you could target them by that skill target by groups. If you're going after people in certain groups, you can go after those. You can go after males, females, different age groups. Uh, it gets pretty specific. The great thing about this, let's say I'm going to give you an example. And I know we're running a little over here, but I, I want to make sure that we get through all of this. this so that's really more of my concern here is, is not the time, but we get through all this. But um, the, the point of all this is that let's say you create a piece of content. And this is something that is really, really useful. And I talked about this actually in the email that might, some of you might have gotten uh, that I sent out. And I was talking about using Facebook ads, but you can use this for LinkedIn too. You create an article, a blog post targeting, um, let's say, people in certain schools. Like uh, the top five reasons why um, you should volunteer uh, – why, why Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin alumni should volunteer, uh, you know, something along those lines. What you, the point is that you target somebody uh, to get them to do what you want them to do. And then you can use some of these data that you have at your, at your fingertips, like school name or study or position, you know, top five reasons why presidents should donate their time. Uh, top five, you know, something along those lines, you know. Uh, what every marketing, what every HR manager should know about marketing, you know, stuff along those lines. Make it very specific to the target audience that you're going after. And what you can do then is then, you know, narrow it down here in this and promote that content in them. What you have in that content, though, is that when they go back to the website, they have a call to action. You know, s submit uh, your email address, sign up for this, become a sponsor. Uh, contact us for a free consultation, sign up for a free webinar, have some sort of other action there. Um, and then you can, uh, you can target them. What you can also do, and I'm not sure if this is capable on here. Uh, I don't think it's able on LinkedIn. Um, but then once you do, you can target them, you could get them up there. And then you could actually even also take it one step further and create a Google advertisement that is a remarketing campaign. So you can, you can get them to go on the web page, look at that blog post, read it. If they don't take the action, you can actually then follow them around on the Internet with the Google remarketing campaign, uh, which then pushes them to take that action even more. So that could be another opportunity here with what you're doing. 
Um, but you know, creating content and around that is, is really powerful. Being very specific, that's how you can use these advertisements as well. But then uh, once we get beyond that, and that's more on the strategic level, if you guys have questions on how to use this specifically to your situation, let me know, and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, whether it's today, you want to shoot me an email, I'll be more than happy to do that. So um, what you can do is I do recommend you pick by to pay per, uh, the cost per click, the CPC. And some of them range um, depending on who you're going after. It could be, you know, they give you the, the bid range here. So it's like $5. The thing with advertisements on LinkedIn is that, excuse me, they're a little expensive i mean they're not horribly expensive like they are on uh, google adwords but still i mean you can see that they're you know you're paying potentially anywhere between five to ten dollars a click so if you don't have a big budget this isn't going to be the best use for your money but uh, you can still go ahead and give it an option or give it a try um and you could set it as daily you could do it uh you know just for uh, until you know we could say until scroll down for a second we'd say until tomorrow uh, $25 day limit so that means it's only gonna run for you know that and essentially I'm only gonna get about five clicks from it which couldn't be a big thing so I could hit launch campaign and then it'll be up and running so there you have it this is the advertisements there's a lot then um, I do want to show you real quickly if we go back let's go back to manage I just want to show you what the sponsored updates kind of look like from a creation standpoint. So in the sponsored updates, though, you this is the sponsored content is different. Sponsor content, you have to do it through um, a company page. So this is content that either is created already or you could create a direct sponsored content already without um, without uh, it being on your webs on your on your company page. So this could be like a specific type of content. So let's say, again, you want to go after a certain target and you created a blog post on it. Maybe you don't want to put it up on your page so everyone can see it, but you do want to create it as a content piece that you can advertise to people. So you can create that. You could type in your message and the post. It's a uh, uh, HR managers need to know how to write a job description like a marketer. Find out how here. And then I can put in the link. I don't have a specific link, but I could just go like brandonlewin.com backslash blog. And then it'll pop up. I can pick the image. I can upload a new image here. I can change the topic here. I could change the body. I could do all these tweaks here. It looks like almost a regular post, uh, but let's say I'm happy with it. I push save, and then I can create other variations to it too. So I can keep on creating more and more, um, but let's say I, I might want to tweak the, 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 um, the body of the message. So instead of saying what I just said there for HR managers, maybe want to create another head, another piece of content there that changes it up. So I could do testing um, and then I select it and then I can see what it looks like here and then I go on to next. Oh, campaign name, test number one. And then let's go next. And then you get to do the same um, targeting options is the other one. So there you have it. So it's very similar. Just the, the message itself is more about content versus an actual advertisement and where it shows up is different too. So when you look at, um, if you look on your home feed, what you'll see is that <clears throat> this right here, staples, this is sponsored content, but this is content. This is like a post. So shows up, um, in your your stream like it would any other piece on here. So um, you can see like uh, so you could see that. And then when you start going to other places, let's say I took a look at um, I'm gonna say like let's say like I'm gonna go to Adam's page here. Um, and what you'll notice is that you'll start to see advertisements though when you notice it. So like up here. 
this is ads. These, this would be, if you created a regular ad, this is what the ad would look like, where it would show up. Um, if you created a sponsored piece of content, it would show up in the stream. And I honestly believe that the sponsored content works better um, because it's not as pushy as a regular advertisement. Um, so, but I have been wrong in the past and, um, you know, what it really comes down to is that you never know what's going to work for the people that you're going after. So test it out, try one small advertisement. Maybe it's a $10 you're spending just to test it out. See if it works. Maybe it's $25 test that ad, then test the content, you know, sponsor that for a day and see how that works and see what the results are. Um, as you start to get into advertisement options, you have to test things out to see what works best for you. But the, those are your options. My recommendation is to go with the sponsored content. But again, it, it's funny how sometimes things don't always go the way you think it's going to go. So, you know, it is worthwhile testing both those different uh, advertising channels. Um, all right. So. Let me just check on my presentation here. Um, I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint slides so we can just uh, go over the last few things. Um, but uh, that that was really the, the gist of everything. I will upload these slides to the page and with the recorded video um, in the next 24 hours. Uh, so we talked about the pre free first paid membership. Um, let me, I do want to jump, hold on. I just want to go over this really, really quickly. Again, I just want to make sure we cover everything. So if we go up here and we go to upgrade, most of you should see this button. If you go to upgrade, you will be able to see the different options here. Um, when you do the, the, the free verse, uh, membership and they'll show you what the options are now. Uh, they have done a good job in the sense that they have segmented them out based off of what you might need. And then they have this pop-up that comes up and I'm going to say, no, thank you. But if you're a job seeker, a recruiter or a sales professional, honestly, um, unless you're a recruiter, you don't need um, to, you know, really figure out one of these other ones. Um, a lot, what you can get in the, for the job seeker or sales professional can still be done in a LinkedIn premium section so as you can see this is my current plan which i think is like 39 or 29 dollars a month um and um i you could see i can see more people uh who's viewed my profile i could see full profiles from third degree connections i have five in mails per month i have 15 introductions i can get i have an open profile i have a four premium search save filters um I can see up to 300 people at a time. I have the five weekly sales searches and I have the reference searches. So a lot of what we talked about is in there. You just get more when you start paying for it. And honestly, if you're going to be doing this whole like prospecting thing, uh, process, prospecting process and program and looking to use this as a, a major generator of business for your company, then I definitely recommend that you upgrade to even if it's just the lower level like I have from the business perspective or even the business plus. It's worthwhile, whether it's that uh, $29 or $50 a month, whether it's $30 or $50 a month, uh, it's worth the investment. I would definitely recommend it. Now, if it's something, if this is not something that you're going to be doing on a continuous basis, then don't waste your money. You can get a lot of this done without having to pay for your upgraded version. All right. Um, one other thing, too, if you're looking to go after certain size companies, um, we talked about, you know, you have that company uh, filter in the premium uh, section when you do the filters. Another thing you could do is you can actually go to a website called connect.data.com. And that website, you can sign up for free. And that website allows you to search for companies that are uh, specific size, make a certain type of money. Now, it's all updated by people who go on there. And so it's kind of like community based. So you have to take some of it with a grain of salt. But it also helps you to figure out if you're who you're going after, who you're targeting or who you find on LinkedIn 
actually fits the revenue size or employee size of the company you're going after or the, the prospect you're going after. So if you're going after revenue uh, size of companies, this is that website is a good place to start and to use uh, for reference purposes. All right, uh, let's jump back over to the session, uh, to the PowerPoint slides. Um, so homework, I have some homework for everybody. For the next, in the next week, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to conduct at least one search, go through, plug in your prospects, and then save that search. Um, definitely, if you want to be aggressive and you wanna be an overachiever, uh, please do so and go out and actually start connecting with these people um, and start making some of those connections. Send out you know, five or 10, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, invitations to connect and see how these people are responding. See what type of results we are, uh, results you get. I would, I'd love to talk with you guys next week to see how that goes. So definitely, if you have a chance in the next week, I would highly recommend that you do that. It's only going to benefit you and help us uh, together in our training process. Also, start to join groups that make sense for you and who you're going after and post to those groups as well. Post an article, post a blog post, post uh, a question in there, or just go in there and start ask, uh, commenting on, on group discussions as well. So there you have it. Um, this will all be up, and I'll send the email out once uh, the, web, the, the video is uploaded on the website and the slides are up there. Um, you'll have a, a password to get in there. I do please uh, ask that you do not pass the password to anyone else. This is strictly for your eyes only, um, and so and it's only for paying members, so uh, just to keep that in mind as well. Um, I will send you the link to it. You'll get the password. You'll be able to log in. You'll be able to get the video. you get the slides, and you'll be able to reference everything. So, uh, again, if you have any, any questions whatsoever uh, between now and next week uh, regarding what we talked about, shoot me an email. Um, you can call me as well. But uh, email is usually the, the fastest way to get a hold of me. Um, shoot me an email, ask me the question, and I'll make sure I respond to you. So uh, there you go. There you guys have it. If you have any last-minute questions, please go ahead and type it in the chat box. Um, and uh, I will stick around here for a few minutes to see if anyone responds. If you've got to run, uh, I understand. Go ahead. Uh, awesome. Cool. Uh, I will talk to you later, Gary. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and I want to thank everyone else. You guys uh, were a wonderful group. Not very loud. Just joking. I had you all on mute. So um, <laughs> I will see you uh, all later. And to uh, the good people at Words on Wheels, I will talk to you guys in about an hour. So um, have a great rest of the day, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.